All right, guys, let's jump into the actual code of bubble sort now. So as you can see, I have just sort of made the framework of our program here. I imported this right here, which uh, you might want to do. We're going to use it at the end. Uh, you'll see in a, uh, I guess you'll see in about 10 minutes. And I have created my class and my main method. So I'm ready to get into the meat of the sorting algorithm. So let's get into it. Let's take it kind of step by step. What's the first thing we need? Well, an array, of course, we need something to sort. So I'll create an integer array where I'm going to use integers throughout the duration of this um, course. And I'll just create a new integer array just with some basic values right off the bat. Six, four, three, nine, seven, ten, two. Sounds good. All right, so we have our uh, array that we're going to sort. So now let's take again, step by step, very slowly. What's the first thing we need to do? Well, of course, we need to iterate through our array. So let's just create a, a basic for loop. For, and then I'll just create like integer i equals zero. And i is less than, so let's think about how this works. What we do is we go through um, the array and we swap elements. So we swap through uh, e each element if it, if it needs to be swapped, if it's not in the correct spot. So let's go less than array.length minus one, because the way it's going to work is we're going to be comparing to the element above it. And so we're going to need to stop one below the end of the array length so we don't go out of bounds. We're going to want to stop one below it just to make to uh, account for this um, fact that we go one above. You'll see in a second. And so then we're just going to increment by one each time. OK, so we have that. And so then again, like I was saying, uh, we're going to be swapping the elements. And so we're going to kind of go through the array one time, do a whole swap. Then we're going to go through the array again, do another set of swap. We're going to go through it again, another swap. So what this for loop right here is representing is an iteration. So I'm just going to re rename i just to kind of clarify that these are all iterations through the uh, a bigger array. Because what we need is actually another for loop. I'll just name the variable j. And we're going to start at 0. Because now this is going to be the reference to the, L, um, the I guess you could call it, uh, element of the array. Because this is, this is all it's going to do is increment through the uh, array each time. Whereas this is going to um, be the actual reference th uh, for the array for the array elements. So we're going to go up until j is less than array dot length. And then remember that what um, actually will be array dot length minus one again, because we don't want to go out of bounds. Uh, but remember that each time we loop through, we can loop through one element less. So the first time, say, you know, we're going to start at six, and we're going to do our swaps, you know, and whatnot. And then we're going to get uh, to the end. But then remember, the next time we only have to compare up to this element, and then up to this element, and then up to this element. So each time we can go one less. So how are you going to do that? We're just going to actually do that by minus iteration. Because as you can see, the first time, it's not going to subtract any. But then the second time when i is 1, it's going to be essentially going 1 less, and then 2 less, then 3 less. So that's how we're going to handle that. And then again, we'll just increment j by 1. OK, that's probably the hardest part of this. Because remember then, all we have to do is decide um, when or whether if we need to swap. So to do that, we're going to compare array j. So we'll, let's kind of look at these for an example. We're going to compare 6 to 4. And we're going to see if 6 is bigger than 4, it's going to need to get moved up. We're going to need to swap them. So if array j is bigger than array j plus 1, like in this case, what are we going to do? Well, what we're essentially going to need to do is set array j equal to array j plus 1. Oops. And array j plus 1 is going to uh, equal array j. Well, uh, but of course, this isn't going to work because we're we're rewriting j the uh, j index of array right here. So how are we are we going to handle that? So what we're actually going to do is we're going to go back up here and we're just going to create a temporary integer uh, variable to handle these sort of situations. So each time uh, we if we need to swap, what we're going to do is we're just going to set the temporary variable equal to array j. So we just we have a reference for that. 
We're going to overwrite J here, but then that's okay because then right here we're just going to assign J plus 1 to temporary. So that's how we're going to handle that swap. So now, actually guys, that's it. That's all we have to do. Let's kind of just backtrack, kind of go through it one more time. So this for loop is going to loop through this entire array. So it's going to start here. So let's kind of take it step by step. It's going to start here. And then we're going to go into here. We're going to have another um, integer j variable. And so it's going to compare this to this. And it's going to swap them. And then it's uh, going to go back. And it's going to increment j by 1. So they're going to, we're going to compare this one to this one. So it'll be like 6 to 3. We'll swap if we need to, swap if we need to, swap, swap. And then again, um, it's going to actually stop at this element. Because remember, we're comparing to j plus 1. That's where that comes in. That's, that would be like, this would be j plus 1 if this were j. If 10 were j, 2 would be j plus 1. And that's why we have these minus ones at the end here, because we don't need to actually go to the end here. We go one less than the end because we're comparing up. And so it's going to go through. And so once, like I said, once we get to the end of this for loop for the first time, then our iteration is going to become one. And so what we're going to be able to do, to do then is we're just going to go through. So we're going to still start at, at zero. It's going to start through j equals zero. But since iteration is one, we're going to only sort these, like the first five, because 10 will be here. We'll know the biggest element is already sorted. And so we're going to only have to go through these first um, six, actually, excuse me, not five, these first six. And then our iteration is going to be two. We're only going to have to go through these five. And then iteration is three. We're only going to have to go through these four, and et cetera, et cetera, as big as your array or as your data set is. OK, enough talking. Let's see if this thing actually works. And oh. <laughs> We have to uh, have a method to do that. So this is where the array utility comes in. We're just going to system out print ln. And we'll do arrays dot to string. And we'll put our array in there. So that should hopefully when we play this, this is our sorted array. So this is bubble sort. It's very short, as you can see. It's about a. Uh, 10 lines, really, you can condense it to about 10 lines, if that even so. Very short, simple array, uh, kind of confusing a little bit with these for loops, but nothing too bad. So that's bubble sort for you. Next tutorial, I'm going to give you an overview of insertion sort. So I hope to see you there.